Morning, Bucknutters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning Five here on Monday, August seventeenth, twenty fifteen. I am Dave Biddle. Ohio State held its media day at the Woody Hayes Athletic Center yesterday, and there are several topics to get into. So let's get right into it. I had a chance to ask JT Barrett if he thinks a two quarterback system could possibly work for Ohio State. The reason I asked him is because Urban Meyer has been asked if Ohio State might run a two quarterback system. He says he doesn't know. Tim Beck has been asked. He says he doesn't know. So the coaches have not ruled it out. So I asked JT Barrett about it yesterday, and he gave a very candid response. He said, quote, I don't think it would be best. And he told a story back from his sophomore year in high school when there was a two-quarterback system where he would play one series, the other quarterback would come in, and he just was never able to get in a rhythm. So he doesn't think a two-quarterback system would be best. He says, if obviously, if the coaches go with the two-quarterback system, you know, he'll run it. He'll do whatever they say. He's a team guy. But he was just giving an honest answer that he does not think it would be best. And I think that concurs with what a lot of you think. A lot of you think that while it would be tough to bench either JT Baird or Cardale Jones, a two-quarterback system doesn't work. I have said all along I think this is the exception to the rule. I don't think you can bench either one of those guys flat out. And I think – Having JT Baird or Cardale Jones come in in the fourth quarter and mop up duty is flat out benching them. But we'll see what happens. Maybe they will go with just one quarterback. Obviously, JT Baird's hoping they just go with one quarterback. Now moving on to a young man that came in as a highly touted quarterback but has already moved to wide receiver, that being Torrance Gibson. And we knew from seeing it with our own eyes that Torrance Gibson was taking some snaps at wide receiver. What I didn't know until I talked with him yesterday is he's now taking all of his practice reps at wide receiver. He's not taking any reps at quarterback, and that makes a lot of sense when you think about it. If you have a true freshman learning a new position and you think he's going to be needed to play right away, you want that guy taking all of his practice snaps at that new position. So he's not taking any reps at quarterback. Torn Skipson is just repping at wide receiver. And Buckeye fans, it sounds like he's going to play a lot this year. I don't think he's going to be a starter, at least not right away, but it sounds like he's going to play a lot. He's going to be in that wide receiver rotation. Zach Smith likes using six wide receivers in that rotation which is perfect for zone six, right? So I think Torrance Gibson is going to be in that rotation for sure throughout the year, especially that first game when you have three wide receivers that are suspended. So very good news there about Torrance Gibson. And he's really embraced the change. It was his idea. He came to Urban Meyer. It's not like Urban Meyer brought it up to him. And I invite you to check out our video interview with Torrance Gibson and our story with Torrance Gibson. He's very mature. I think he got mislabeled as a me first diva. He's not like that at all. He comes across very mature, and I was very impressed uh, with speaking with Torn Skipson yesterday. And furthermore, I think it's very exciting if you're a Buckeye fan that this talent, this guy that's being compared to Randy Moss, which I think is a little rich. Let's be clear. I think that's a little rich. But this guy who's being compared to Randy Moss has now moved to wide receiver. It's been a move that a lot of people have opined might happen for the last two years It's finally happened, at least for this year. I asked him, do you think it'll be permanent? He said, I don't know if it's permanent. He's like, but if I have a really good year this year as a wide receiver, you never know. And I think that's well said. If he tears it up as a wide receiver, as a true freshman, I don't think he's going back to quarterback. Also had a chance to catch up with true freshman running back Mike Weber yesterday at Media Day, and I wanted him to revisit the recruiting drama. I'm sure it's something he didn't want to talk about, but it was our first chance getting a chance to talk with Mike Weber. And you know, he admitted that he was upset when when Stan Drayton first left. He was very confused, but the bottom line is everything has worked out well for Mike Weber. He's very happy being at Ohio State. He was the second true freshman to have his black stripe removed, Isaiah Prince being the first. And looks like he's going to play as a true freshman. The question is how much. He's battling Briante Dunn for that backup running back job behind Ezekiel Elliott and I asked Tony Alford the running backs coach yesterday who's ahead and he says Briante Dunn's a little bit ahead of Mike Weber right now but it's a very tight race and both those guys are going to be needed most likely and he did add that Warren Ball is still in the mix too so it was good to hear a coach actually mention Warren Ball actually recognize that Warren Ball exists it's the first time I've heard a coach even mention his name in a while so they have a lot of running backs there I think still think Curtis Samuel is going to play summit running back even though they've moved him to H I think they're going to move him around to make sure they get him the ball a lot so Curtis Samuel might really be the de facto backup running back even though he's moved to H if they need a guy to go in there and spell Ezekiel Elliott and get a few carries you know it might be Curtis Samuel but point of the matter is Mike Weber had a tough time there during recruiting but everything has worked out well for him and I already mentioned offensive tackle Isaiah Prince being the first 
freshman to get his black stripe removed. Well, he's also earned a spot on the two deep. I had a chance to catch up with Isaiah Prince yesterday. Ed Warner has him on the two deep at right tackle. He's backing up Chase Ferris. And I really like this move. It's clear next year they're grooming Jamarco Jones to take over for Taylor Decker at left tackle. And they are grooming Isaiah Prince to take over for Chase Ferris at right tackle. I think those guys are going to get some decent amount of playing time this year. There's going to be a lot of blowouts. So that's going to give a chance for Jamarco Jones to get in there and Isaiah Prince to get in there. And even a guy like Evan Lyle to get in there. Hopefully Demetrius Knox if he's healthy. So that backup off offensive line is going to get a chance to play a lot this year and that's big when you look ahead to next year because they're going to be losing three starters off the offensive line next year now let's turn our attention to recruiting and bring in Alex Gleitman he's going to talk 2016 wide receiver recruiting Alex tell the listeners what they need to know about wide receiver recruiting in the 2016 class the Buckeyes already have an excellent player in Austin Mack from Fort Wayne Indiana but they're looking to pair you know, and, uh, another talented player across from him. And right now the top two targets on the board are Benjamin Victor from Coconut Creek, Florida, and Donnie Curley uh, from Martin Luther King High School in Detroit, Michigan. And right now, you know, the Buckeyes, I wouldn't say they feel strongly either way about landing one over the other. They feel they're in a great position for both. Definitely in the top two for Victor along with Florida with Tennessee creeping behind in third. They feel they're in the top two for Corley with Michigan State. But the longer that drags one, that dra- that one drags out, you're going to have Michigan. You're going to have Tennessee. Maybe a little bit of Notre Dame sneak back into that one. But, uh, you know, talking to sources inside the Woody Hayes Athletic Center, the Buckeyes feel good about landing one of the two of Corley or Victor. Personally, I think Benjamin Victor right now might be the better shot for the Buckeyes. I just I don't love the way Corley's trending, even though I was told, uh, you know, that that the Buckeyes feel better about their chances than the than the general public does, and all the recruiting analysts do. Uh, but right now, I would go with Victor. He had a great visit uh, for a week last year during Friday Night Lights. He had another great visit, an unofficial this summer, in which he pushed back. Uh, his commitment date, he was all set to pledge to the Gators. So I think with a, with an official visit, a continued great relationship with Zach Smith um, and, and guys like Austin Mack recruiting him hard, I, I think Benjamin Victor, I, right now I, I, would, I would probably put my money on Victor over Corley to end up in this class. But, you know, with the way things are going, uh, you know, you, you, you could see some new names pop up in that list, especially if the Buckeyes fail to land either Corley or Victor. Real quick, class of 2017, just wanted to provide an update there. I love the Buckeyes' chances with Trevon Grimes. I think he could pop any day for Ohio State. St. Thomas Aquinas in Florida starts their season August 28th on ESPNU against Booker T. Washington. I think a commitment could come uh, before then, but we'll have more on Bucknuts uh, about Grimes in, you know, in the coming weeks as, as it leads up to a potential commitment there. I love the shape Ohio State's in early uh, for Cleveland Heights wide receiver uh, Jalen Harris. I think Ohio State's in tremendous position uh, for him. He's a 6'5", big wide receiver, uh, basketball player, tremendous athletic talent. And I think, uh, you know, the Buckeyes, while he may not commit right away, Ohio State, Michigan State, Alabama, they're all in that one. But I think the Buckeyes will win out. You pair those two with a Bruce Judson, uh, maybe a couple other play, playmakers. I think Manny Green, Emmanuel Green uh, from IMG Academy in Florida. I think he's a player to watch. I think he wants to be a Buckeye. I think he's just waiting for the for the green light to go ahead and commit. So those four right there could be an outstanding, uh, you know, core wide receiver in the class of 2017. And don't forget, you know, guys like Jeff Thomas and Donovan Peoples-Jones who have said Ohio State's are, you know, certainly in their top five, if not higher than that. So Ohio State, you know, Donnie Corley, Benjamin. And Victor, they land one of them great. If not, they have tremendous talent coming behind in the class of 2017. Thank you very much, Alex. Great insights as always. I would bet in the end, Urban Meyer is going to land either Corley or Victor. We will, of course, keep you posted out there, Bucknutters. Thanks again to Alex Gleitman, and thanks to you for tuning into the show. I appreciate it and I hope you have a great day. Take it away, best damn band in the land. Bye.